Hi there, Paul Thompson here from Spitfire Audio. I'm very excited to be talking to you today about Spitfire Symphony Orchestra Pro. Wonder Woman 1984, The Trial of the Chicago 7, The Crown, James Bond, The Grand Budapest Hotel, The Dark Knight, Harry Potter, Gladiator. What do all of these films have in common? They were all recorded in a beautiful recording studio in central London called Air Lyndhurst Hall. Architecturally unique, the acoustic properties of the interior of Air Lyndhurst Hall were spotted by Sir George Martin and he created a recording studio in this location that has been the destination of choice for film composers from all over the world for many years. Many of your favourite scores will have been recorded in this beautiful room. Players love playing in this room, and this is because of the acoustic feedback they get from the surroundings. There is a, a gentle reverberation in the room that just adds beauty to literally anything you play in there. It could be a single instrument, or it could be a small chamber group that expands and blooms inside the space. Um, and when you have a full orchestra going in there, such as on How to Train Your Dragon by John Powell, you get the most enormous, epic, thunderous, colourful sound. It's really a very, very beautiful acoustic space. Now, I'm really just scratching the surface with just a few of the first grabbed sounds that I'm taking out of Spitfire Symphonic Strings. You'll see that I'm using a kind of similar mic mix on all of these sounds. And what I've brought into play are the first of a new set of microphones that you get with the pro version of these libraries. And that is the outriggers. Now, I'm often asked, what are outriggers? And the answer is that they are a, a kind of sideways extension of the Decca tree. So the Decca tree stands just behind where the conductor stands. And it's above the conductor's head, and it's three microphones that capture the whole soundstage of the full orchestra. Now, many engineers will add the outriggers to the Decca tree as a matter of course. We've kept them separate here because it's sometimes one of those things that you want to add to taste. Let me demonstrate what exactly the effect is of adding these microphones in. 
So first of all, let's have a listen to the pizzicatos on the first violins, just with the decatry, and you can hear where they kind of appear in the soundstage as a result of those mics. And now with the outriggers. Now you can hear here that we've got a widened stereo field. And if you combine the two microphones, it really does add a nice extra dimension to the soundstage. Now you can alter the balance so you can tilt it in favor of the wider sound but still keeping that the core in a sense of the of the decatry sound or you can just add a little bit of those outriggers to taste which focuses the sound back into the center in a way but gives you just that extra little bit around the edges that um, that help you to kind of build a wider sound stage now we're often after that width in film tv and game scores and there are a couple of different reasons for that one is that you often want a slightly hyper real sound. So rather than just very faithfully presenting the sound of the orchestra, as it would appear if you were sat in, next to where the conductor is listening to the orchestra, which would sound fantastic, you want to increase the width of the sound and sometimes increase the kind of um, vibrancy and immediacy of the sound for dramatic effect. So that's the first reason. The second reason is that often the dialogue is going to sit bang in the middle of the soundstage. And it really works well if you can try and keep your music um, so that it's slightly wider than that, so that it's out at the sides. And there you will find more sonic space to have your score live. Um, if you avoid that area in the middle where the soundstage is focused really on the intelligibility of the actor's words. Now here I've loaded up the violins again with the pizzicatos, but with the stereo mix signals. Now that's a quick demonstration of the three different mix perspectives that Jake Jackson, our mix engineer, has produced for you. The advantage of using these fine, medium or broad sounds, um, and they give you those kind of focuses on a more of a pop sound, more of a general purpose sound, might call it a kind of um, indie score sound, and then the broad, maybe more epic blockbuster type of sound. Um, the advantage of using these is that you cut down on the voice counts. You have a ready-made mix that works across the whole orchestra, and you just have one single voice per note for all of your orchestral elements. Now, finally, we have this alt collection of mics, which gives you, again, another palette of color to use. There's some really great stuff in here. It opens with the ST mic. This is a stereo stage mic, and this gives you a very different sound from the Decca sound. Check this out. Moving along, we have G, which stands for galleries. Now, you'll recall from the photos of air that we've put up earlier that these are some absolutely beautiful architectural details of the room. They not only add to the sonic image of the room, but they're also incredibly useful to put microphones up and capture something that is very, very distant, but can give you, a, a again, an incredible length and kind of 3D spaciousness to the sound. Just check out these mics on their own. Now I'm going to put the stage mics back in and you can hear the difference with and without the galleries.
we have these wonderful close ribbon mics. That's what CR stands for. And that's a different color from the normal close mics. It has a more rounded top end and it has that kind of slightly vintage sound, but it's a warmer, fuller sound than you get with the normal close mics. Check this one out. And if we listen to that with our consordino, our muted long strings, um, which always have a slightly fizzy top edge because of the sound of the, of the muted string there, check this out with these vintage ribbon mics. I'm blending those in with the stereo stage mics. Really beautiful sound. It really does add a character and a different color to the sound. Last but not least, we've got L, which is our leader mic. And this is a microphone that is focused on the leader of each section while the section are playing. So you can bring out a little bit of the leader's own uh, performance within the sound. Check this out. And looking at that with the consordinos. And with the non-muted sound. And if we add that back to the stage mics and, and show you the difference with and without those. Now in this example, you can see that having the leader mic in brings out a little bit more vibrato, but it's, it's like you can hear almost just that one player's vibrato, the leader's vibrato. Um, so it's almost like laying a solo violin over the sound of the string section. And that's quite a common trick that's used just to get a little bit more of an emotional response to a particular line. So that's a very, very useful microphone there. So let's go back to CTAO mics. And if we go into the advanced folder here, you can see that there are uh, many other options in here. I'm gonna load up two. I'm gonna load up first the Time Machine Shorts, just to give you a demonstration of what these sound like and the, the kind of effect that you can get with these. Now you'll see here there's a control called Stretch. I'm gonna show you what that does using this short note. So with Stretch Bang in the middle, we have this effect. Now, if I pull stretch to the left, then it lengthens the notes. And if I push it to the right, it shortens the note. Now, with some of these shorter articulations, for example, the short brushed, You can use this effect either while you're playing in real time for this kind of thing. You can see there that we're able to shorten and lengthen notes at will as we're playing. It's very, very straightforward and it gives all of these short articulations much more life and variability. You can also use it to create some great special effects. If we go to the pizzicato and slow it right down, You get that great kind of crunchy separated sound um, and then if we start to go upwards then you get a very very tight sound that's almost like a kind of artificial synth sound and that is very very useful as well but it's within the extended techniques folder that we find our core and decorative techniques. And this covers 
everything apart from your legato, which is in a separate folder all on its own. And within here, we've got an absolute encyclopedia of sounds. I mean, way too many for me to go through, um, but everything from the most delicate sounds here, flotando, solpont, soltasto, one of my favorites. All the way through are different kind of attacks. Through the uh, standard short notes. And different short styles. Through to these really unusual long notes, the uh, consort, in other words, the muted solpont, which means played on the bridge of the instrument. So it's combining the slightly scratchy sound that you get from the solpont with the beautiful gentleness of the consordinos. Super Soltasto, a really, really, really gentle. A fabulous and extravagant Rachmaninoff vibrato. We've got blended mixture of consort and normal amongst the players. We've got tremolos, tremolo solpont, measured tremolos with consort, with the mutes and without. Um, in fact, these are incredibly useful. Uh, these trem, uh, they sound like this. But actually, if you play them quietly, you can do these fantastic. And so you can see, you can get that kind of wonderful scattery sort of um, double bowing type of sound. We've got the most beautiful collection of trills. From your standard minor and major. But then minor third. and these wonderful, wonderful major thirds. And then an incredible effects collection. Tons and tons of stuff in here. You've got everything legato-wise from these fabulous performance legatos These great sol G patches, in other words, where the legato is solely played on the bottom string. And when it reaches up in the range, you get this incredible, intense, passionate sound. So what about the brass section? Well, in Spitfire Symphonic Brass Pro, you have these incredible players playing not only your orchestral staples, your horn, trumpets, tenor and bass trombones, but you've also got these extended sections. So you've got the S6 sections for the, for the trombones, for the trumpets and for the horns to give you that when you really need that over the top power sound. You've also got um, the contrabass trombone, and, and in addition to the tuba at the bottom end, you've got the contrabass tuba and the chimbasso. You've got the chimbasso solo and a pair of chimbasi. Um, so you really do have a lot of color to play with here. So let's just pick a couple of sounds at random and I can show you some of the power contained in this library.
absolutely beautiful lyrical horn here. And then we have a variety of different lengths of short notes. With a wide dynamic range. Um, but let's, for fun, jump up to our six horns. Everything from your standard kind of great solid articulations all the way through to these amazing multi-tongue sounds. So as you can hear, you've got a variety at the end of the note, but also with the variation slider, you can go for uh, double tongue, triple, and quad. Now, what about having our trombones in octaves? Two tenor trombones and two bass trombones. Now, how about these incredibly bitey staccatos? So you can see that you can get, you know, everything from the really punchiest bitey sound all the way down to these lovely soft And that's not even looking at the cuivre, where we uh, encourage the players to play in a more brassy fashion. Now, what about our contrabass trombone? It's not only capable of those aggressive raspy tones, but it can also play surprisingly beautifully. That's a great sound. It's got its own kind of uh, unusual sort of texture in there. I really, really love that. Now, while we're on trombones, um, let's load up the chimbasso because this is a really fantastic instrument and one that you might not be familiar with. So let me first show you what it can do in terms of its kind of aggressive nature. So as you can hear, it's quite unruly but it's also capable, as with the bass trombone, of producing these very, very delicate textures. And then as we move up the dynamic range, you get that, uh, that kind of characteristic thick sound that starts to come in. We've got this one cuivre as well for the really brassy, blatty sound. And so you've got that, that, that kind of equivalent. But for me, the real gold of this instrument and the sound is the, is the impact that it can add to big kind of uh, orchestral hit type of sounds. Um, it really punches out the bottom end in a, in a manner that is very hard to achieve. Um, on its slightly more cultured cousins. So again, a very beautiful um, and dynamic sounding solo trumpet. Um, you can crossfade between your vibrato and non-vibrato to give you that extra dimension of performance, um, but also it has a nice wide dynamic range. So you can really kind of get your emotional melodic lines happening.
So a really agile and sparkly sound as well there and tons and tons of interesting articulations here to play with. But of course, we all want to know what six trumpet sounds like and that sounds like this. So when you really need to go to town and get that laser beam attack, it's right there, ready and waiting for you. Now, it wouldn't be uh, any fun if we didn't hear the tuba playing its traditional solo staccato. Now, this is great, um, not only because it's a fabulous player, uh, in this beautiful room, you get a real kind of bass resonance from the tuba. And from a lot of these uh, bassier instruments, especially the bass woodwinds, when we get to those, you'll find that this room really adds um, a bottom end, a kind of power to the sound that helps you to get a nice full and wide orchestral timbre. And of course, the contrabass tuba as well. And like a lot of these sounds, there's a lot of definition in here and you can go from, you know, you can produce things that are very, very gentle and very soft and you can produce things that are really kind of full tilt. So opening up the Symphonic Woodwinds Pro, it's an embarrassment of riches in here. We've got some really great stuff. We've got all of the members of the flute family, the alto flute, the bass flute, as well as your piccolo and normal flutes. Let's have a quick listen to these. So you can hear there control over vibrato and control over dynamic. And actually, if you want to um, play uh, polyphonically, if you want to play more than one note at a time, then you can create your own flute section and get these really smooth crossfades. Listen to this. So you can hear there that there are multiple levels of vibrato within this. And I absolutely believe that control over vibrato is half of the musical information that you're putting into the line. I mean, if we just imagine a line played uh, like this, for example, and then start to control the vibrato, And then we add in the dynamics as well. So you can hear that there are different dimensions of musicality that we're able to add to the sound as we're playing. Uh, with just those two controllers, you can get so much done. We've got to check out the wonderful bass flute. such a wonderful and haunting sound there and then again looking at some of the outliers of the orchestra I just have to go to the bass clarinet and the contrabass clarinet just to give you an idea of what you the kind of beautiful stuff you've got down this end <laughs> really really a uh, huge dynamic range there. Going for the legato. Mm -hmm. 
Now again, here you can hear the all the key clicks and all the beautiful uh, breathy sounds and the noises that the instrument makes as the player is playing it. It's such a great, fantastic instrument. Um, but if we want to go for that, for an even more extreme sound, then we need to load up the contrabass clarinet. So good for down that bottom end and the richness that it adds to the room there. Um, let's load up the contrabassoon just to give you uh, a, a little taste of that down there as well. So you can hear there when we go right down to the bottom note, that bottom B flat, that is really, really resonating the room when the player plays loud. It's like a it's like a kind of amp signal or something like that. It really is a fantastic effect. Um, and that is also, just to point out, lower than the basses can go even with the C extension. So the basses, the string basses can go down to that C, but these instruments, the contrabass clarinet and the contrabassoon, can get you a whole tone lower. Very, very useful. Now, just if your chamber strings led, if that's your sound and you're not really for the big symphonic string section, Spitfire Chamber Strings and the Chamber Strings Pro edition of SSO Pro as well um, is absolutely fabulous. Again, just looking at these incredible collections of sounds, I mean, the variety of sound that you have in here. And just to show you a couple of these, again, with the Saltasto. The difference in that sound with such a small number of players is very, very beautiful indeed. Our beautiful Consordino. And then of course you've got these super tight short notes. And the super cheeky pizzicatos. It's worth noting that they also go up incredibly high. And so many legato options that they are even split into two patches. So um, everything from legato tremolo. Through your sol G. These really superb runs patches that will just get you immaculate sounding runs. And then, you know, the alternative fast legato as well, which gets you your kind of arpeggio stuff. So there's a ton of stuff in here. I mean, it's it would just take days to explore all of the different sounds that are in this library. And I haven't even talked about this incredibly useful um, patch of ensembles, which are all baked into this beautiful
everything from your uh, spiccatos I mean, super useful for composing to have the whole string orchestra laid out in one uh, go. I know that Christian loads up these ensemble patches to write with as the very first patch that he goes to. Um, very, very inspiring. Again, super wide dynamic range. Really, really useful. And if you have a system which has a lower resource than the one that I'm using at the moment, then you don't have to load up all of the mics separately. You can just go straight to the mixes to get three different pre-balanced mixes that will cover 99% of your scoring requirements and then only uses a single voice per note. So very, very useful there. So it's difficult within one short overview video, but I hope that I've been able to give you a feel for the range of color and sound that you can get from this collection. And a key part of this sound um, is not only the amazing players that we are so blessed to be able to work with here in London, but also the sound of this beautiful studio, Air Lindhurst Hall. It's truly unique. It's a one of a kind. There are very few rooms in the world that sound as good as this. So um, having your orchestra recorded in exactly the same way as your favorite blockbuster scores, all of the scores that I mentioned at the beginning were recorded in this room. You'll hear the signature of the room in many, many film scores and video game scores as well. And having that sonic imprint and the whole orchestra balanced and ready to go is amazingly useful and such a time saver. It's very hard to make um, samples that are recorded in a dry room sound like this because the room is bound to the sound of the players. The players respond to the room. The instruments vibrate in sympathy with the room. It's really one wonderful virtuous circle. And when you're after this sound, this kind of epic score sound. It's the room that you record in has such an enormous effect on the end result. So in no expense spared production, the same players playing through the same mics, the same preamps and desk through onto tape will get you the sound of the crown, of the dark knight, of gladiator. If that's the sound, if that's the film score sound that you want, then this is absolutely the collection for you. Thank you very much for watching. It's been great to have you here and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.